Hi everyone. Welcome to the workshop of mining and learning with graphs at scale. We'll have four sessions in this workshop. The first session will cover introduction to graphs and a number of application stories. The second session will talk about basic tools and algorithms in the library. The third session will focus on graph neural networks. And finally, we'll talk about systems, algorithms, and scalability. Let's start by an introduction to graph mining and graph-based learning. I'm Bahab Mirokni, and I've been leading the graph mining project for the past 10 years. In this talk, I'll try to give you a high-level view of what graph mining and graph-based learning is, what are the applications, and I'll try to set the stage for the rest of the workshop. Let's start by defining graphs. A graph at its core is a representation of relationships between entities. We refer to these relationships as edges of the graph and the entities as nodes of the graph. In the most general case, graphs can have varying number of edges, can have different types of edge, edges and different node types, and can have very complex structure. As a result, they can model many different things like social networks or traffic networks. We can use them to model the spread of disease or pixels of an image. In general, we deal with two types of graphs, natural graphs and similarity graphs. In the case of natural graphs, the, the edges of the graphs are given to us by an external source. An example of such a graph is a social network with friendship relations that are declared by the users of the social network. On the other hand, for similarity graphs, we are only given some metadata on each node and you have to build a nearest neighbor graph that we call the similarity graph. This nearest neighbor graph is built by looking at the metadata on nodes and like constructing a relationship, a similarity relationship. And then you use this nearest neighbor graph while processing the data. Note that then we are processing and using the nearest neighbor graph. We can still use the metadata on nodes, but pre-computing or dynamically computing this nearest neighbor graph can help us in computation, saving in pre -com uh, like computing um, these nearest neighbor um, functions over and over again, especially if we are dealing with high dimensional metadata, pre computing or efficiently computing these nearest neighbors are very important and useful. It can enable us also to do things that we are not able to do without the nearest neighbor graph. So, why do we use graphs? First of all, they can help us abstract out relationships in the data, and relationships is an important part of analyzing any data set. In particular, they can help us translate local information on the, uh, on the data to global in, like information and global um, properties of the data. At the same time, we can use graphs to navigate multimodal type data sets. If you're dealing with different types of data sets, visual, textual, semantic information, one idea is to build a graph across these different types of data and then use the graph to navigate between different data types and infer things beyond what we can learn from one type of data. So we can also talk about why we use graphs from a global and local point of view. From a global point of view, graph structure can help us identify different types of patterns in the data. For example, clusters or multi-hub distance metrics. As an example, when in image search, we search for an ambiguous term like apple by identifying like similarities between images and the visual similarities between images. We can identify different clusters and then uh, providing an answer distinguish between the answers that uh, relate to the cluster of Apple the fruit and the cluster that's related to Apple the company. We can also use graphs to help with uh, extracting local information on each node. So there are information that we can learn for each node based on the neighborhood of this node in the data set. These are type of information that we cannot um, learn by looking only at the node itself. So for example, we can say what a pixel in an image is by looking at the neighborhood of that pixel in the image. So because they are very useful in representing data, 
graphs uh, are very applicable at Google scale data. And in, at Google, when we build graphs, we are dealing with graphs with billions of edges and like many more billions of nodes and many more edges, like uh, maybe trillions of edges. So the techniques uh, by combining algorithms and systems that help us handle uh, this um, size, these large graphs is the main focus of the workshop. The library that we have built based on these ideas uh, have been used for in hundreds of projects across Google search, ads, YouTube, uh, maps, and so on. Examples of such applications are in identifying same meaning queries for keyboard matching systems, uh, in collaborative filtering in YouTube and other recommendation systems, in the use graph partitioning in providing better caching properties and save big uh, percentage of flash I.O. bandwidth for search infrastructure. And also we use graph clustering in identifying micro markets in designing AP experiments. We'll cover these applications throughout the talk and workshop. Before diving into more specific topics, let me give you a bit of history of the graph mining team. We started this project uh, around 11 years ago with the mission of developing the most scalable and reliable graph-based mining and learning library and make it universally accessible. So our aim has been to go after graphs with trillions of edges. We started by developing a scalable graph mining library and over time, we moved to develop graph-based learning and graph neural networks tools. The team has a combination of skills in algorithms, systems, and machine learning, and we both have researchers and engineers uh, in the team who work very closely with each other, and engineers play researcher role and researcher play engineering role at different times. We publish in a number of venues, including machine learning venues like NeurIPS and ICML, algorithms venues like Soda, Stock Box, and system and data mining venues like VLDB, KDB, and so on. And throughout the, talk, the workshop, we'll cover results from these papers and also some results from the engineering systems that we've built and we haven't had a chance to publish. We have learned many lessons over time. So for example, we learned that combining the right algorithms and the right systems is a, like an important part of the puzzle that we are trying to solve. For example, we started from by developing the tools under Pregel framework. And because of some reliability and fault tolerance issues and uh, our desire to provide this to uh, like very easily for everyone, um, these tools, we moved to use MapReuse and Flume. And then we added distributed hash table service as a way to accelerate and make the, the distributed algorithm to be implemented much faster. In the past two years, we also embarked on developing infrastructure to be able to combine graph-based learning and uh, basically deep learning tools uh, under TensorFlow. We we'll talked about uh, these in the last part of the workshop. We also learned many lessons about which uh, set of tools are more useful. For example, we have tools on graph building, graph clustering, and semi-supervised learning that are very popular. But then at the same time, we have gra um, tools like shortest path matching, graph similarity, and graph-based centrality scores that are not as commonly used. They are used, but not as um, much as the other tools that we are going to discuss in this workshop. And part of the reason is that maybe like the uh, other uh, systems have their own specific, uh, basically, implementations of, for example, shortest path computation. Let me elaborate a bit about the system algorithm part of the library. We have many popular frameworks for big data and machine learning analysis. And we have actually implementations of our algorithms in different uh, platforms. I can divide the uh, library into four parts uh, in this regard. We have a library of distributed algorithms that are implemented in MapReduce, Bloom, and distributed hash type of service. This is to deal with graphs with trillions of edges, and uh, the goal is to go after, uh, to, to analyze such graphs in a matter of hours. We also have a library for analyzing uh, graphs with a multi-core in-memory parallel implementation. 
The aim there is to go after graphs with tens of billions of edges in a matter of minutes or tens of millions of edges in a matter of seconds. So for the clustering library here, for example, we use GBBS uh, graph-based tools. Uh, we also have a part of library that we call graph tensor, which is uh, to uh, ensure we can do we can implement graph neural networks uh, efficiently in TensorFlow. We also have a dynamic graph mining library that handles uh, online requests very fast, and we are not going to cover this part of the library in this workshop. I can divide the library into six main components. The graph building, clustering, topology analysis, and similarity ranking, information propagation, graph signals, and graph neural networks components. More recently, we have focused on like the graph-based learning tasks, and from that perspective, we can divide the tools into Grail, which is for learning graphs, graph-based semi-supervised learning, uh, semi-supervised clustering, and neural graph embedding and uh, graph convolutions. So I'm going to give you a sense of each of these components of the library in the next couple of slides. In the graph building and graph learning part of the library, our goal is to answer two questions. What is the optimal graph that we can build given a data set? This is about building those similarity graphs that we've been talking about. And how can we create such graphs at scale? So the big challenge is we are dealing with graphs with even like hundreds of millions of nodes that this can create many, many pairs of edges. So we have to do it at, at scale and fast. We use locally sensitive hashing, local search autoencoders, transfer learning, and some other learning techniques in this regard. The other important part of the library is the clustering component. This is to identify important patterns in the data that we call clusters. And there we use sketching, random walks, message passing, composable corset techniques, and we develop different types of clustering algorithms like hierarchical clustering, overlapping, balanced partitioning, spectral clustering, and so on and so forth. The information propagation and graph-based semi-supervised learning part of the library is designed to deal with sparsity in data. In particular, we have ways to spread information um, through a graph to predict missing labels or missing data or correct misinformation on the, the data. We use spectral graph theory, iterative classification, and graph-based and supervised learning techniques in general. Um, the graph signal and topology analysis part of the library aims to identify different type of structure. For example, similarity ranking, multi-hub similarity schools, like personalized page rank, or um, structures like egonets or clusters of egonets. And in a multi-model world, we use some of these graph signals, like graph embedding and edge density, as a modality for uh, basically other machine learning systems. We use random walks, clustering, and embedding techniques in this regard. More recently, we have embarked on a mission to develop a seamless integration of graph uh, analysis and deep learning under a TensorFlow framework. Uh, so this is to be able to take advantage of graph data in the context of deep learning in an end-to-end -end differentiable manner. This is where we use techniques like message passing neural nets, graph sampling, graph attention models, and so on. And in particular, we also use other graph analysis tools like personalized page rank vectors efficient computation of personal page and vectors in building this GNN infrastructure at scale. We're going to cover this topic in the third part of the workshop. Let me continue by giving you a number of canonical use cases of these tools at Google. So we use uh, these graph mining tools for spam and fraud and abuse detection. There are two types of application in this context. Uh, there are like label propagation and anomaly detection applications. In the context of label propagation, the idea is to start from some known bad actors on the data, build an, uh, like a graph structure uh, relationship between actors, and then by looking at the nearby neighbors uh, of the bad actors um, and propagating information like that, identify other suspicious actors. 
uh, on the, in the context of anomaly detection, the idea is to identify dense clusters, or basically statistically unlikely dense clusters that we hypothesize to correlate with the highly malicious behavior. So we can identify those structures and then go and investigate the data. The ideas like this have been used in YouTube ads, payment systems, and many other uh, Google anti-abuse systems. Another big area for graph-based learning is improving other ML models. For example, in the context of relational discovery, we can answer questions like people you may know in a social network by navigating the graph. A concrete application of this type for link prediction is uh, in the context of Google-related images. When you search on an image and uh, click on it, you can see 10 related images in Google image search. Those 10 images are constructed using graph mining technology. We also use graph-based signals uh, in, as features in other machine learning models. So for example, we use personalized pegs and vectors, graph embeddings, and clusters in other um, machine learning models. In particular, in the multi-model world, this is very useful to extract data and, and features for uh, setting that we have multi-modality. Another area of uh, applications of graph-based learning is in efficient computing. In the context of resource efficiency, we partition graphs in a way to minimize communication across uh, like servers that may be analyzed this data. And by minimizing interaction between servers, we save on CPU. An application of that is in Google Drive in direction, where uh, we try to minimize the number of uh, times that the source destination pair goes across several servers. In the context of data efficiency and active learning, we use graph-based learning to identify a diverse set of data points that we can label. So when we want to decide which node to label next, we can use graph-based learning to uh, help in these active learning type tasks. We use graph-based clustering and coverage techniques in the context of active learning like this at Google. The, this is the end of the first talk uh, of the workshop. And I hope I convinced you in the last 20 minutes that this is an exciting area with many uh, like research applications, uh, research uh, challenges, and also very interesting applications. Um, we are going to cover the workshop in 15 different short talks uh, covering different aspects of the library. We have a website under Google AI Graph Mining Project, which is a part of Algorithm Optimization Team. And uh, it will be 10 of us, uh, basically, from Graph Mining Team um, presenting in this workshop. Uh, let me point out that this is a collaboration with 20 plus other members of the team and also many, many collaborators at Google. Uh, the presenters are experts in different aspects of graph mining and graph-based learning. We have people with expertise in systems, um, algorithms, and machine learning among the speakers. So uh, more specifically, we'll cover uh, a number of application stories the rest of this session. For example, in COVID forecasting, privacy-related applications, and causal inference. The second session will cover graph learning, similarity ranking, clustering and community detection, and label propagation topics. The third session will be about graph neural networks and graph embedding, and how we build these graph neural networks at scale, or how we combine it with other tools in the library. The, the fourth session uh, focuses on algorithms and systems and scalability, and has three parts about TensorFlow uh, library, the Plume and distributed implementations and the multiple parallel implementation. Without further ado, I'll hand it to Amal Kapoor, who will talk about graph-based learning and uh, graph neural networks for COVID forecasting. Thank you.